Narcissus was the most beautiful young man in all of ancient Greece, at least in the opinion of Narcissus. The blind prophet Tiresias had once foretold that he would live to a ripe old age, provided that he never knew himself. Unfortunately, Narcissus knew himself all too well. Every morning when he woke up, the first thing he would do would be to examine himself in his full-length mirror. He would run a hand through his long blonde hair. He would wink with one of his bright blue eyes. He would flex his muscles and smile at himself with perfect white teeth. Then he would slip on a chiton, a short tunic, and go down to breakfast. His parents had no idea what to do with him, for although he was only 16 years old, he was in truth remarkably good-looking. Half the girls in the country seemed to have fallen in love with him, and the trouble was, he was so impossibly vain that he broke hearts left, right, and center. One girl, for example, had sworn that she would kill herself if Narcissus wasn't a little kinder to her. His only response had been to send her a sword. The wretched girl had run herself through with it, and that had been the end of her. But it wasn't only humans who were bowled over with Narcissus. Greece was also filled with nymphs, charming spirits, who peopled the rivers and springs, haunted the glades and mountains, and guarded the trees and the forests. One of these was called Echo, and falling in love with Narcissus was the second bad thing that happened in her life. The first had been to play a trick on Hera, who, as wife of Zeus and queen of the gods, was not known for her forgiving nature. Echo had distracted her by singing while Zeus slipped away to enjoy himself with another nymph he had happened to meet, and when Hera had found out, she'd been furious. She had punished Echo by forbidding her the power of speech, and at the same time condemning her always to repeat the last words anybody spoke to her. So when Echo tried to tell Narcissus what she felt about him, she was only able to use his words. The result was disastrous. She met him one day in a forest. Narcissus had supposedly gone out to hunt stags, but it was really too hot for hunting, and besides, he was afraid he would muss up his hair or ruffle his clothes. He was wandering down a leafy path when he saw the nymph gazing nervously at him. He yawned. Hello, he muttered. I suppose you are yet another one of these women who find me so very attractive. So very attractive, Echo replied. I thought so, Narcissa said. Well, you're wasting your time, I'm afraid. I'm afraid, Echo said. And so you ought to be, Narcissus continued. To be absolutely honest, even if you were Aphrodite herself, I wouldn't let you come near me. Come near me, Echo cried. Are you deaf or something? I just told you I wouldn't. Now go away. Away, Echo moaned. Realizing that her plight was hopeless, the nymph fled from the wood, tears pouring down her cheeks. She spent the rest of her short life heartbroken and alone in a desolate valley, living in a cave. Her flesh disappeared, her bones turned to stone. Soon all that was left of her was her voice. And should you ever find yourself in a valley or a cave and call out, you will still hear her reply. Meanwhile, Narcissus continued on his way, wondering what he should wear for supper that night and whether his hair would look even better if he parted it on the left. But it so happened that Aphrodite had heard his last remark to Echo and had seen what had taken place. And she was angry, for Aphrodite was the goddess of love, and Narcissus had, by his words and deeds, made himself love's enemy. She put a curse on him by making him fall in love with himself. Narcissus has always loved himself more than it was proper, but once he had fallen under the spell of Aphrodite, he was lost. On his way home, he came upon a pool of crystal water in a clearing in a forest. It was a hot sunny day, and he knelt down to take a drink. That was when he saw what was, in his eyes, the most beautiful boy in the world. His mouth fell open, so did the boys. His eyes blinked with astonishment, so did the boys. He smiled, the boy smiled back. He had fallen in love with his own reflection. The next day, his parents, 
who had been searching everywhere for him, found him still sitting beside the pool. Narcissus, they exclaimed, what are you doing? We've been so worried about you. Hush, Narcissus whispered. A single tear trickled out of the corner of his eye. You'll frighten him away. Frighten who away? His mother asked. The boy, Narcissus replied. He is so beautiful and yet so cool. For when I reach out to touch him or try to kiss him, he runs away from me. He reached out and touched the surface of the water, and sure enough, the reflection shimmered and disappeared. But he comes back after a while, Narcissus continued, his voice soft and far away. See, there he is now. Hasn't he got lovely eyes? The boy's gone mad, his father muttered. Come into the house, Narcissus, dear, his mother said. You haven't had supper or breakfast, and you'll catch your death of cold sitting out here all night. No, no. Narcissus cried, I can't leave him, not ever. And despite everything his parents said, he refused to move. All day and all night, he lay in the long grass, his head propped up in his hands, gazing silently at his reflection. They brought him food, he wouldn't touch it. His torment was all the worse because although the object of his love was only a few inches away, they could never touch, they could never meet. At last, the pain became too much for him. It seemed to him that the boy in the pool had suffered too, for his face was terribly thin and his eyes were red and sore. I have hurt you at least as much as you have hurt me, Narcissus whispered. His hand reached out for the dagger that he wore in his belt. I shall hurt you no more. He plunged the knife into his heart. He screamed, the boy screamed, and summer far away, Echo cried out too. Narcissus died, and Aphrodite, taking pity on him, turned his body into a flower as a reminder of what had happened. And to this day, Narcissus' flowers can be found growing wild in the woods and sprouting around the banks of a silent pool. <laughs>